Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. One of my most all-time favorite things to do is to fish a shad spawn. You know, the problem is it's a very, very small window, so I'm gonna break it down for you. I'm gonna show you exactly the baits that I use, and I'm gonna tell you where you guys need to look on your body of water if you wanna go try to find a shad spawn. All right, so basically the shad spawn, you know, it starts, in my mind, 68 to 69 degrees, it's really going when that water temperature is 70, 71 degrees. And I'm talking about a thread fin spawn. You know, the gizzard shad, they'll spawn like at 65, 66, but the thread fin shad, that's the one that's most predominant. That's those, you know, two to four inches that are, you know, predominant all throughout all the lakes in the south. And it's just an epic, epic deal. And, uh, you know, the, the, the one issue with it or the one problem with it, um, you know, it doesn't last all day. You know, they do it all night long and it just, we're catching the tail end of it when that sun's rising, you know, for that first hour, two hours in the morning. Now, it will last longer than that, one, if your water's dirty, the dirtier that it is, the longer it'll last. Two, if you got clouds, so when you got really clear water, man, it's really quick and over. The other thing about a shad spawn is, <clears throat> man, it's like, you can be running down a lake and it, you, you go practice and you find it here on this point. Well, when you come back two days from now, they, it may not even be happening on that point. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a, a, a unicorn or something sometimes. I feel like, you know, uh, there are times, and, and I think those instances are more in clear water. Like for me, when I've got stained water, I'm talking about water, you know, like that. When I've got that kind of that kind of water clarity, I can count on it. Like it's a deal. Like if I find it, I can count on it. Um, you know, the one mistake that people make is one: you got to get out of bed early. You got to be at the water at the break of light, and you got to be going, like going, going, going. The number one telltale that you need to look for when you're out there is birds. I don't care if it's those white egrets, blue herons run until you see birds because they know where it's happening they're having to get their bellies full that's like the number one thing the other thing is they they spawn on anything really you know i, I don't want to sit here and say one thing or the other you know for me some of my favorite places to catch them is boat docks tire reefs uh, uh, retaining walls um, but it's not limited to that you know i've caught them on hydrilla i've caught them on cattails i've caught them uh, riprap banks, clay banks. Um, it happens just anywhere up shallow, out to five, six feet of water. I don't want to just say up shallow because I've caught them out on hydrilla uh, that's underneath the water that I can't even see. And so like, how do you know it's happening? Like that's, that's another question you might ask. If you ever reel your bait in and you see, you see two or three shad following it, the shad spawn's happening. That's like, you got to go. Like it's going to happen. I, like it's just, Put everything else aside, fish the shad spawn because you can get well in a hurry with that. So uh, those are the places you need to look. You know, I like those marinas, those tire reefs out at the mouths of big spawning pockets. Uh, same thing with uh, uh, retaining walls. Just think about where bass spawned just right outside of that. That's where I look um, on any body water. I mean, it can be a clay point, a riprap point, or a boat dock, but just look right out in front of that stuff. Those are the best prime areas. So let's talk about the baits. You know, I, I really like shad spawns in, in, in dirtier water just because it's more consistent. You can catch a lot more fish. So, you know, I'm gonna start off with baits for that stained water. You know, that water clarity that, that's, you know, anywhere from here to, to a foot, foot and a half, two feet. The number one bait for me is that one right there. A tandem gold, silver, half ounce spinner bait i mean i just love that bait exactly like that right there i'll tie that thing on 20 pound test a, a high speed reel and that's the bait that i'm going to throw in that stained water my number one bait like man just i can't tell you how many bass i've caught on that i've just a lot that's like for me the the, the best best bait now if the water gets clear I'm gonna change over to a double willow leaf and a little bit more transparent skirt. You can see how this skirt's solid, this skirt is more transparent. So this is gonna be a clearer water spinner bait right here. And you notice I've got gold, silver, again, half ounce, something I can move. You know, I'm not, I'm not reeling this, this bait down deep. I've got the half ounce because I'm moving it. I'm all the time making it erratic and jerking it and, and, and making that bait move. But that for me is the number one bait. I've got that on a seven foot, one inch, medium heavy uh, rod, a high speed reel and 20 pound fluorocarbon. And I am throwing that 
and getting it like anywhere and everywhere I can go. And if I've got shad bumping that thing, it's gonna happen. I just gotta go until I find where the bass are. And so many of the times those birds will give that away. They're just gonna be standing up there. Okay, the number two bait. Number two, number one by far, everything else is, is after, is a swim jig, a white swim jig. Um, again, I'm gonna use a solid skirt with a more dirty water, go to more of a transparent skirt when it gets clear. Now this is a half ounce uh, swim jig. I like this bait right here. It's a solid white, you know, for the dirty water. I'm gonna use more of a transparent skirt when it gets clear, half ounce. But I like this trailer. This is the uh, Berkeley Power Chunk. It's a max scent. I like it because it's a duller color. That's like the number one reason I like it. The number two reason is I like this little flat portion. So many of the times I'm skipping this bait back up underneath foam and docks and, and underneath pontoon boats. And uh, it's just a bait that I'm gonna swim out of there pretty quick, you know. And, and both these baits, the spinner bait, the swim jig, you know, we're keeping it all within a foot, foot and a half of the surface. You know, as it gets clear, you get a little bit deeper. But again, those shad spawn up towards the top when I'm talking about boat docks and tire reefs. Now, if we're talking about grass and those kinds of things, then you gotta tick the top of that grass. So if you're in six, eight, seven, eight feet of water and the grass is three, four foot tall, you know, you need to be fishing the very top of that grass because that's where they're gonna be spawning on. Uh, but that's kind of a different scenario. We'll get into that next. Um, okay, my number one bait, spinner bait. My number two bait, swimming a jig. These others, Man, they kind of are all like, I can't put one in front of the other. Uh, I just can't. You know, a vibrating jig, phenomenal shad spawn bait. Just, I love it. You know, I've got a solid white one there. I've got more of a transparent one right there for the cleaner, clearer water. Again, both of, them, both of those are half ounce. Uh, it's just kind of one and all, you know, but uh, I'd have to say I've done a square bill. You know, if I had to, choose like because my spinner bait really covers the same thing that vibrating jig does uh, they're kind of just one and one and the spinner bait's definitely better i think in most instances over that vibrating jig um, so i'd have to go with a square bill I, I have caught so many fish on a square bill crankbait you know in and around the shad spawn so what i like to do is you know there's times i like to just add a little bit i like to make it a little chartreuse so i kind of rough the sides up just a little bit on these things and what that'll do is, is I'm able to put some chartreuse on it just a little bit. I just kind of want it to get a little bit of a chartreuse hue to it, and this will help get it to stay on there. So I just kind of rough a white bait up like that, and then I take my, my chartreuse dye, and a Q-tip works a lot better than a rolled up paper towel, but I'll just kind of just paint the sides of that thing just a little bit. I don't want it bright chartreuse. I just want it a little chartreuse, not a lot. And that's all it takes right there to make my crankbait look a little bit different when it's coming through the water. You notice that's not a lot of chartreuse. It's just kind of really subtle. And that's what I like. I like just putting a little bit of chartreuse on it. I do that all the time on my crankbaits. But uh, man, that's a that's a great shad spawn bait. This is going to be a bait that, that when I'm in and around riprap, clay points, uh, that's going to be the bait that I'm going to throw when it's like that. Um, you're going to be digging that bottom a bunch. And, and again, shad will be following this thing. And when shad are following it, you know you're in and, in and around a shad spawn. You know, a lot of people get, get really tied up into the size of the bait. And uh, they get tied up into that you know, when, they're, when the shad spawn and, and you see little bitty shad spawn, and that doesn't happen a lot, but I found like with my spinnerbait blades, I want them to be a little bit bigger than the shad that they're feeding on. I'm trying to present, a, you know, a better meal for them. So don't, don't look a lot into trying to match your bait to the exact size those shad are, because most of the time they're pretty good shad when they're spawning, and there's always bigger shad around. Even though you're seeing smaller shad, you know, you keep looking, you'll see a bigger one around, so. Okay, so those are my top three baits. Now, if we get in some really, really clear water, you gotta throw a top water. It's just, you know, that's probably the best bait when you get in that super clear water, you know. When you get in that five to 10 foot visibility or even more, you know, a top water bait like, like this Jay Walker is gonna be a bait that, that will work and call those fish up and in around the shad spawn. You know, it's, 
it's not as a consistent deal when you get in that really clear water. That's when I don't put a lot of weight in the shad spawn, especially fishing tournaments when it's really clear water. I don't know why, I just I feel like it's too hit or miss uh, for me in those situations, but that is a bait that I will use in those scenarios. You know, I know that's a really quick overview of the shad spawn, but you know, I've given you the temperature, I've, I've given you the places to look. The main thing is to cover water, look for those birds, get out there early, have confidence in those baits I just told you about because they will work. You just got to find the right, the right spot. Just because shad are spawning doesn't mean there's always bass. Um, so keep going until you get a bite and, or you see bass blowing up on shad because it is magical when you find it and it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's, it's a way to put a lot of fish in the boat and some really, really big fish, guys. So I uh, appreciate you guys following along and we'll see you next week.